Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. Draw us forth to the table of life. Brothers and sisters, each of us called to walk in your light. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I love you, Lord, my 
strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior. You who gave great victories to your King and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had from you, and how you turned from, to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest in the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus tells us that we need to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. 
And that can be a difficult thing for us because as important as a concept love is, I think we all struggle with really being able to define it in practice. And partly that's because the English word love is used so broadly. It's hard to say that what I say, what I'm meaning when I say that I love my family is the same thing as I say that I love pizza. And it's hard to say that when I, when I you know, declare that, oh, I love that movie, I mean the same thing as when I say I love God. And that's part of it, I think. But the, another part of that, the challenge is that it's so easy to confuse love with just a feeling of, of joy, of closeness, of affection. Because when we use it in some ways, like when I say that I love a movie or I love a food. What I'm talking about is that when I experience those things, I enjoy them. I feel better. And when I talk about, you know, loving family and friends, a lot of the time those same positive feelings accompany that interaction. It's nice to see a friend you haven't seen for a long time. There's something beautiful and joyful about being able to spend time with the people that we love. But when we start to confuse the love of that, that feeling, I think we can get into some very serious problems. Because, first of all, we can't control that feeling. We can't look at somebody and say, I'm going to make myself feel happy to see them. And because I can't control it, it creates the very real possibility that in a certain moment, I start to question whether I love that person because I might be tired or upset with them and don't have that warm, fuzzy feeling when I see them. And we've all experienced that. And we've all had that moment when there's a person we really care about, but seeing them just makes us angry because they said something or did something that really upset us. But even though in that moment we might not like them, we might not enjoy their company, we can still love them because those two are very different things. And if you don't believe me, just think of any person trying to, to raise a child. There's going to be plenty of moments when they have to say no and the child is going to be upset with them and say something very mean and very rude. And they're not happy in that moment. They're not, you know, that, they're not that child's favorite person and that child is not their favorite person. But there's still that deep bond of love in that moment. You know? I always like to use the example of if a parent is pulling a child back because they were about to run into the street not paying attention to the giant truck coming down the road. They're so angry with that child, they're ready to throttle him or her. But they did that because they love them and they don't want to see that child hurt. They don't want to see that child do something that's going to harm them. That's love. Even though it's in that particular second accompanied by a lot of fear and a lot of anger. So we, we have to be careful that we're not seeing that, you know, warm, fuzzy feelings that, you know, that thing that cartoons describe as floating in the air, surrounded by birdsong and, and flashing lights. 
because love is much, much more stable, much more profound than that. Because love is wanting what is good for the other person. Loving a person means wanting them to be happy, to be holy, to be safe, and being willing to do all we can to make that happen. And sometimes that means doing something that is going to upset them, doing something that they will make us feel bad about. Anyone who's loved an addict knows that feeling because addiction makes people very good at manipulating emotions. They're very good at making people feel guilty about telling them no, makes them very good at making someone feel like they're a horrible person because they're not enabling that addiction. But the loving thing is not to enable that person as they're destroying themselves. The loving person is to be there for them, to try to get them help, but not encouraging that self-destructive behavior. And that brings us to the love of God. Because the Lord is telling us we have to love God totally. And if we start to confuse that with the emotion of feeling joy and peace, it's going to become an almost impossible task. Because I don't think there's anyone who feels amazing every single time that they try to pray to God. I don't think there's anyone who has never had a bad day and walked into the church and just not felt anything in that moment. And if they start to think that unless they do have this ecstatic experience every time they try to speak to God, then they're not loving God of all their heart, they're going to set themselves up for failure. Because, again, it's not about the emotion, because we can't control the emotion. We can't command ourselves to have a feeling of closeness when we pray any more than we can be having a terrible day and just say to ourselves, you know what, I've decided to no longer be depressed. Now I'm going to be happy. I'll say for about three hours, then maybe I'll have a 15-minute session of rage to kind of even things out and then I'll just feel calm and peace for the rest of the day. So I'll start my timer now. It doesn't work that way. Instead, we have to choose to continue to love God and love our neighbor regardless of what's going on emotionally. We have to choose to want to follow God's law to want to choose to keep praying. We have to keep choosing to want to serve our fellow human beings because they are beloved of God. Whether in that moment it is easy and joyful or whether in that moment we are forcing ourselves to do it. Because that is the essence of love. And we love and we know that because we see that in Jesus Christ. When it was time for the Passion, he wasn't joyful and excited and couldn't wait. He went to the garden and begged the Father to let him skip this step, but more importantly, to do whatever was right, whatever was the Father's will. And when he was being crucified, he wasn't looking at the people who were doing that deed, thinking to himself, wow, aren't these just the greatest people? You know, let me, let me wish them well because I am so happy to see them. Instead, he was wishing them well. He was forgiving them because even in that moment, 
when his humanity was crying out in fear, in betrayal, in anger. He wanted them to be holy. He wanted them to be happy. He wanted them to be safe. So let us commit ourselves to living that type of love, to each day commit ourselves to trying to grow closer with God, not by how we feel emotionally, but what we choose to do, what we choose to think about, how we choose to speak to the Lord and to one another. Let us make the commitment to love the people around us, love our families, love our friends, love strangers, love our enemies. God never commanded us to like everyone. He never commanded us to have no enemies. He commanded us to love everyone, including our enemies. And so we need to commit ourselves to each morning getting up and wanting to, to help the people in our lives be happy, be holy, be safe, doing what we can to make that happen, whether they are currently our favorite persons or not, whether we might be upset with them or not, whether they make it easy or not, and then extend that to others as well, to never do things out of a desire to see people hurt, but to do things of desire to do what is right, to treat people with respect, to recognize their dignity as images of God, whether they are right about things or not, whether we disagree with them about even the most important things or not. God is calling us to love. And he's not calling us to love in the way that we might love French fries. He's calling us to really love God with all our heart and to want what is good for all the people he has placed in our lives. That is a very challenging thing, but it is possible because that love comes down to the choices we make, not the way that we feel. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
And now trusting in God's great goodness and love and recognizing our need to respond to his love with love of our own, we turn to the Lord, bringing forward all the petitions we have for ourselves and for those he placed in our lives. For pastoral leaders and preachers, for dedicated liturgists and educators, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those affected by the recent violence in the Middle East, an end to these attacks and the coming of a just peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For patient peacemakers and negotiators, for compassionate leaders and honest lawmakers, let us hear our, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We for all the men and women serving in our armed forces, that the Lord will keep them safe and allow them to experience the gratitude of those they help to protect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who live with chronic illness and for all impaired by addiction, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the members of this assembly and for all those whose loved ones have passed away, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for Joan Walsh, Frederick Millett, and James G. Blaine Sr., for whom these, this Mass is offered today. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for hearing us. And we ask you to continue transforming our hearts to be instruments of ever more perfect love and to become more like you in all we do, say, and think. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christians, let us love one another as we share the true living bread. Jesus is our God and our brother. With his flesh and blood we are fed. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our life, God is love. We who break this bread are one body. We who share this cup are one love. Children of our Father in heaven, we are heirs with God's only Son. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our life, God is love. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so, in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven, as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You have owned man in your own image, and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. So that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. He gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When 
when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood to sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant a merciful Father that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Take away. 
away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, 
perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Love.